Hey, design friends, and welcome to the discovery step. The discovery step is the first step that we'll do once we start working with a client or once we are considering to start working with a client when they approach us. And the purpose of this step is to discover and discover what do they actually want us to do? Why are they even doing this project? The purpose is to uncover what is the actual problem we're being hired or they're actually looking to solve. And we have to discover that because how can we commit to something if we are not really sure uh, what, what they're looking to do, right? If we don't know the problem, we don't know that we can solve this problem and we don't even know if that problem is a big problem or a small problem. And so understanding what the problem is, is a crucial step in understanding what project are you going into and how am I going to price the project and how am I going to scope the project? What do they even need? I have to have a very clear understanding about what the problem is. Now, here's the thing, a lot of clients are will come to you and they will say something like, I need a logo, I need a website, or my website needs an update. And they think they need something, but they are not really clear about what is the problem that they are trying to solve, right? Because I need a website or my website needs an update is actually not a business problem. The the definition of a problem is something that negatively impacts the business, right? If they don't have a website, but it doesn't matter because people are coming through the door of the shop and buying and the business is growing and everything is good, maybe they don't even need a website, right? Or maybe they wanna have it as a business card, but it's not gonna impact their business. Um, but if they're losing sales or people are not buying through the website because, because it's bad or because it doesn't exist, then, the opportunity lost or the problem that is caused by that is a big problem and that they want to most likely solve. Now, a lot of clients will not know how to define this correctly and this is the role of you as a consultant here in the discovery phase to understand what is the problem and then come up with solutions of how you can solve this problem. Now, here's the thing about problem different problems or the same problem actually might have a few different causes. And here's an example. If I have a problem like my car won't start, that's a problem, right? I can't drive to wherever I need to drive, but I'm not really sure what's causing this problem, right? One cause of my problem, my car won't start might be that I'm out of gas, right? But if I try to fill up gas, but it turns out that the cause of car not starting is because the engine is broken, then filling up the, the car with gas is not gonna help solve the problem. So the idea here is that it's not only enough to understand what the problem is, obviously car is not starting is a problem, right? And it's causing me problems and has a negative impact on my life. However, without understanding what is causing that problem, I can't find the right solution. So this is the kind of like diagnostic and discovery uh, that we have to do together with the client during this step. Now, as a result of getting this clarity and going through this discovery diagnostic step, then we can actually make a recommendation as experts who understand the problems, the, the possible root causes of the problems and the possible solution, we can make a recommendation to them about how to actually solve this problem. And also by making the recommendation, here's what you need. This type of website, these kinds of feature, features are gonna help you solve the problem. Then you also understand how complex it is to do this thing, how many pages they need, what kind of technology they need. Now you have the understanding and you can scope this project and you can also price this project and you can put a deadline on this project. And now you can move forward into closing the deal and actually starting to work on this problem. Now, as I've mentioned, a lot of clients will not really know what their problem is or even how bad it is. And I'll give you an example, and I'm, I'm taking a lot of examples in this video from a book that's called Gap Selling by Keenan, which is a whole book about the discovery process. And I, I recommend at the end of the video to check it out. But I'll give you an example from that book, which is, you know, if you have a headache, let's say you have a headache, you understand you have a problem, right? You have a headache. But if you jump into um, a solution, if you say, okay, I need a headache pill, for example, you don't really know what's causing this problem. And, you know, you might go to a doctor and that doctor will prescribe you, um, you know, headache pills, but they might also tell you something like, hey, we need to do an MRI scan. And during that scan, you, you discover that you have, you know, uh, 
brain tumor or something like this, and if you don't fix this problem, you're gonna die soon. So now, it's the same problem, right? A headache, but in one of these scenarios, the implication of not really dealing with the problem are huge, huge implications. And now let's take this metaphor to our world. Our clients come to us sometimes with, I need a website, which is kind of like, I, I have a headache, right? I know that there is this problem that I need to solve, but they don't really deeply understand what's behind it and what are the implications of not solving this problem. So you are in this scenario, in this discovery process, you are like the doctor and your job here is to analyze, is to do all of these testing and ask all these questions to figure out what's really going on so that you can give them um, an honest diagnosis of the situation. And the diagnosis might be like, look, you don't really need a super complex website. Maybe you just need a very simple thing, which is like, let's compare it to a headache pill. Or look, you really need to have this very specific solution. If you don't do that, something horrible might, might happen. I'll just give you an example related to website. Let's say it has to do with being uh, compliant due to, let's say, legal privacy things. Let's say they are missing a core component in that website, uh, a cookie pop-up or a privacy page or something like this, and lacking that in their business actually puts their business in a liability and their business might be sued for $20 million. That is a huge risk. Maybe they were not even aware of the fact that they are having this huge risk. And now it is your problem, it is your job as a consultant, as the expert to let them know what is the situation that they are currently at and explain what is the problem and how bad the problem is. Now you have to understand that helping them do this, and this is, as I've said, this is before we even started working. This is just the discovery phase. You didn't send a proposal yet. You didn't get paid yet. This is kind of like a free consultation you do to, to just discover what the problem is. But just doing this, just telling you, you know, potentially you have a cancer or your business is in a, in a huge uh, business risk, telling them what are the what the problem is what the impact might be and how to fix it this is a very very valuable thing so by doing this step correctly you already prove yourself as a valuable consultant and if you do this correctly this step this step will help build a lot of credibility between you and the client and will position you as an expert helping them to identify and solve their problems and that will make selling and pricing the whole project much much easier. All right, so now I want to break down and I'll, I'll do a quite of a quick overview of all the different types of problems that we as web designers help our clients tackle. And there I'm going to cover a lot of them. So I'm going to go through this. Um, I'm going to go through this fast. But my goal with this program is that by the end of this program, you will be an expert on these pro problems and you will know how to help your clients solve these problems. So let's start diving through them. So first uh, problem, customers can't find us online. Uh, customers don't understand what we do or how we are different. Customers don't trust us. Customers can't buy online from us. C customers can't book services online. Customers can't find the right information. Uh, we don't show up on Google. We don't capture enough leads. We don't have uh, visitors converting. We, we need to impress potential employees or investors. Um, our website is hard to maintain. Our website is not compliant with regulation. Uh, our competitors have better websites. Uh, we don't look premium enough or big enough or innovative enough. Um, you know, we have a new marketing manager and they feel like they need to to make an impact. Um, the client maybe feel is feeling ashamed of showing this website to prospects and friends. Now, uh, maybe the website looks bad on mobile. Maybe you look outdated. Maybe the website is not consistent with your branding. Uh, maybe staff is wasting too much time answering questions that can be answered on a website. And there might be a lot, a lot more questions or and problems. Now, some of these problems can be solved you know, with better design. Some of these problems can be solved with better messaging. Some of these problems can be solved with the technology that you'll use. But you are going to become an expert on solving all of these different problems so that you can, while you're having this conversation with your client, you're going to identify, oh, you have this problem. 
Now let's identify what's causing it. Maybe it's maybe people don't trust you because your website has bad typography and bad color combination and it just looks so bad so people don't trust you and then they're not buying from you. You're gonna become an expert on these problems and how to solve them and then you can make um, you can advise your clients on how to solve them. So your job actually in the discovery process is to become kind of like a detective, right? You have to really figure out, because as I said before, a lot of times they don't really know what is the problem and what's underlying beneath it. So you have to dig and you have to ask questions and you have to push and push and push, you know, again, in a nice way, not in a pushy way, but you have to dive deeper and work together with them to uncover the true problems. Your key tool of doing this is asking questions and specifically asking why. So like, why do you wanna do this? Why is this important to you? Why now? You know, why is this a problem? How, how are you doing things today? What will happen if you do not change? What would happen if you do change? So you have to ask all of these questions to get to the bottom of what's really, really going on here. Now, this step is usually done either you know, over the phone in a Zoom meeting or, or in an actual physical meeting. And I would advise that if you have the, the possibility, if you are within the same geography and location as your clients, I would recommend you do this process face to face. Because to do this effectively, you need to spend some time with them, right? This is not something that's you're going to do in like 10 minutes. This is a deep conversation where you're trying to uncover things. So, and, and if you're in the same room with them, you can read them better, you can develop better relationships. So if that's possible, that's amazing. Otherwise, you know, Zoom calls and or phone calls can, you know, can work as well. However, the one thing that I do not want you to do, and this is a mistake that a lot of beginner web designers do, is they send a survey. They send kind of a survey, tell me about the problem. And then they will just list the problems that we talked about. What is your problem that you're trying to solve? What is, you know, your competition? What would you like to happen? All of these kind of things, but this thing doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because this is not a conversation. The clients will just input the first thing that's on their mind and send it to you. And as I said, a lot of times they don't know what's underneath it. So you will have to uncover it by asking why why, why multiple times, and you have to do this in a conversation, and you have to dive deeper. So sending a survey or, or a questionnaire or something like this keeps the your understanding at a very, very, very shallow place, and you do not wanna do this, so I encourage you not to use a questionnaire, but actually you can use the questionnaire to kind of guide your conversation, and we'll add, you know, relevant question for the discovery phase in our resources here. But I, we suggest that you use this kind of as a guideline for the conversation versus just sending them the question and asking them to, to send you, uh, you know, deep, deep down uh, answers. Imagine, you know, going to, a, going to therapy by just answering a bunch of questions. You can't really uncover what the true problems are if it's not within a long, deep conversation. And what you need to understand about the discovery phase is that you can't move forward. You can move to the next step unless you really understand what the problems are and what the, what the underlying causes, what the root causes to these problems are. And then you know that you can actually solve them because sometimes you will discover, oh, these are problems that they are not in my domain of solving. For example, if you know a client you know, talks to you about, a new website, and then while talking to them, you discover that they actually have zero traffic, right? And so even if you make the best website in the world, it still has zero traffic and nobody even gets to the website. It turns out that they don't have a website problem, they have a traffic problem, right? Now, perhaps you're a marketer and you know how to run ads or do SEO or, or something like this to generate traffic, but if, you, if you're a designer and what you know how to solve and what you wanna solve is building websites, building a website is not gonna help generate traffic, right? Um, so you might not be able to help solve that problem. And that is very, very important because you wanna be able to say, hey, you know, a lot of designers would, <laughs> would think, yeah, but they want a website and I can sell it to them, so let's, let's sell it to them. But this is going to create disappointment with the client because at the end of the day, you'll finish the project, they will pay you, and their problem is not gonna be solved, 
right? And so you haven't done your job of helping them solve the problem. They will be disappointed with you. They will feel like they've wasted money on this initiative and nothing changed for their business. So if you wanna be an expert, if you wanna be a good consultant, it is your responsibility to know what the actual problem is and perhaps tell them, you know, right now, what you need is a traffic. This is not something that I can solve. I can recommend you some marketer or somebody like that, that it's gonna help you generate some traffic. Once you have some traffic, if you realize that your website, your current website does not perform as good as you want to and we need to improve it to you know improve our conversions or whatnot, then you can come back to me and then we're gonna work on that. You're gonna, your potential clients are gonna treat you, they're gonna have so much trust in you after you tell them something like this because you're not just trying to grab money from them, you're actually trying to help them and you tell them, hey, you don't need me right now, you need this other person, come back to me when you actually need me. And then there, you can be sure that they will come back to you because they trust you and they know that you want what's best for them and you're not just trying to grab money and you know and do work that is going to end up meaningless to them. All right, so as I said, if you're not sure that you can solve the problem, then first of all, as I've said, we've covered through a lot of problems so far and my goal here is that you will be an expert on most of these problems by the end of these problems, uh, by the end of this program. That being said, there are always gonna be new problems. Technologies changes, the world is changing, there are gonna be new problems. So you might ask yourself, am I willing to learn right now on the job? And if we take the example that I just shared about, let's say the problem wasn't in the website, it was generating traffic, perhaps you will say, well, this isn't actually a good, you know, a good opportunity for me to learn how to solve this problem. I'm interested in learning how to solve this problem. So I might want to learn on the job. So maybe it's an opportunity for you to learn somebody. But if it's not, if you're not interested in learning how to do that particular thing, perhaps you can either hire somebody else to do that. Perhaps you can say, I can help you solve that. You go ahead, hire that marketer, bring them on board and tell them, okay, we're going to help you solve that problem. Or you can just, as I've mentioned previously, you can just de decline and delegate this and just make a recommendation. Um, the point is you wanna be helpful and you can be helpful by s helping them solve the problem yourself, whether you do it or you delegate it to somebody else. And you can also be helpful by declining and making a recommendation about a different professional. So let's run through an example conversation of how that conversation might look like. So here's, uh, here's an example. Client calls and say, hey, we need a website. So I would tell them, well, I'd love to help you if I can. Can you tell me a little bit about your company? And they would say, uh, you know, we're a startup company with a complex B2B technical product and in the electronic space, we, we don't have a website right now. So I tell them, all right, so who, who is going to be visiting this website? So they might say, you know, we're in the process of raising money, so potential investors uh, will be checking out to see who we are. And also we're recruiting people. So all of these people are probably gonna Google us and wanna see, you know, who we are. All right, so I, need, uh, so I can ask them, okay, so if you're, you're problem right now is to impress those you know, investors and engineers. What do you think they need to see on the website to make them invest or join? And they might say, well, you know, they have to understand what our big mission is. They have to see how successful the founders have been with their previous endeavors. So I can say, okay, cool. What, what else is important to them? Well, you know, it needs to look like a solid company, not just like a fledgling startup. So I say, okay, got it. Um, and do, do you have some references for you know what solid companies uh, look like to you? So I better understand what you mean. Um, yeah, and they can say something like, yeah, you can Google you know this company X and company Y and see how they look like. This looks good. We think this looks solid. Um, so I can I, I'm I'm trying to dive deeper, right? Can you explain to you me you know why you consider them solid? What's what's looks solid here to you? And I'm trying to understand what do they mean by company companies that look solid and what do you, they think that will impress you know, these investors or these engineers. And I'm gonna keep asking questions and questions until I really understand what they think they need. And so in the end, I'm going to sum it up for them and say, okay, so I think I understand your, your problem, right? First, you need to actually clarify your story, right? So that it makes sense to investors and potential employees. And then you need to wrap it up in like a solid visual language and present it on the website together with 
with the founder's background for credibility. Now, there's a few ways that we can go about this, right? We can go with a solution like Company X did, right? That would probably cost you something like, let's say, expensive amount, and it's gonna take us three months to complete. But I also think that you can go with a simpler solution at the moment, and you know it can showcase both your story and team on a on a one page. That will be easier to create. It will probably cost something like let's say a cheaper amount, and it will only take us like a month to deliver. Um, after you raise you know your money, um, then we can revisit the website and go with something a little bit more robust. Your goals will probably change uh, at that point, so we can revisit. So you see at this point, once I've understood their problem, I'm coming up with solution and not necessarily just one solution, I'm coming up with multiple solutions that might help them solve their problem and we're working together to make the decision what is the right solution for them. This helps set expectation in terms of what the price is going to be um, and how the solution is going to look like. And I wanna make sure that they agree with that before we go ahead, send a proposal and actually kick off this project. All right, as I said, discovery is a crucial, crucial part of understanding what the project is and then also pricing it correctly and also a huge part of the sales process. If you wanna learn more, a uh, fantastic book about it is called Gap Selling by Keenan and I re recommend you checking that out if you wanna learn more about how to do fantastic discovery. But what I want you to remember is that you don't move forward until you have clarity, right? Don't be afraid, if you need more time, ask for more time. Don't, don't be afraid to say, look, I'm not 100% sure that I understand what it is that we're trying to do here and what's the real problem. So I, I need to ask you a few more questions or I need a little bit more time, right? You wanna know the problem, you wanna know the root causes and you wanna know that you can actually solve it. And a successful discovery will be concluded when you've identified the problem and the causes and you've made some kind of a suggestion to the clients, right? You've advised them on, here's how we can tackle this problem, here's how we can solve it. And they've actually agreed, they said, that sounds like a good solution to the problem we have. We wanna work with you on solving that problem. So that is the discovery phase, and I hope you manage to do it successfully.